I knew that I wanted to be a computer scientist when I was in the seventh grade. What do seventh graders re really want, right? Attention. Attention from girls, primarily. The first real program that I made was a program to calculate the classes that I should sign up for to give myself the best chances of being in the most classes with the girl that I liked in my grade. I ended up being in four out of six of her classes, and not surprisingly, I didn't mind going to school that year. <laughs> Despite all that, I didn't get much attention at Slauson. I was really trying to leave my mark there. Before seventh grade, I played a lot of video games. My parents, they told me that I couldn't play a lot of video games, so naturally, I had to play every video game I got my hands on. But looking back on it, I realized that I play the games I did not just to waste time, but because they were beneficial to me. The ability to plug in my headset into my Xbox and be instantly connected in a Skype call with my friends who are halfway across town was extremely empowering, especially because back in middle school we didn't have cars. It was such a rough life back then. Us kids, we never get what we want. <clears throat> It was also a great way to spur creativity. Whenever I had an essay in class and I found myself in a writing block, playing a couple of video games of my favorite game, Super Smash Bros, was a great way to get over that. The reason that I didn't realize that I wanted to be a computer scientist sooner was because the games that I made were not as beneficial to me as the games that I played were. Sure, the games that I made were fun, addicting even, but they were never the highlight of anyone's day, mostly just a time filler. But, uh, but that all changed in seventh grade when my teacher, Mr. Fuller, assigned us a history project. And this history project was very loosely written. We could have done anything we wanted. We could have written a book report. We could have written a persuasive essay. We could have done a combination of a lot of things. I chose to make a video game because that's where my interests were. This game, though, was special to me. You were a dude who flew around in a spaceship and visited several locations along the Earth. Once you got to these locations, you had to tell the locals about the climate, the culture, the history, etc., or else they wouldn't give you the supplies that you needed. Did I also mention that aliens were attacking you at every turn? So if you didn't get the supplies you needed, it didn't matter how good you were at my game, you'd ultimately get vaporized by the aliens. This project was intended to help my peers study for the final exam, which was a couple weeks after the final project was due. So I posted this game online. What happened next was remarkable. The lowest grade that anyone received in my class that year was a 92%. That's right. Talkative Terry, who just talked his way for every lecture. Chatterbox Chris, who slept through every class. Even the dreaded slacker Sam, who skipped every single uh, lecture the entire semester, they all got at least 92s on this final exam. Each and every one of them stopped me in the halls, and they said, Max, I didn't know how to study for a test. I didn't know that I could receive the grade that I did. I always felt like school just wasn't in alignment with where my interests were, where my focus was. But after playing your game for an hour or so, it was a miracle worker. Changed my life. Thank you. I took that same philosophy and I implemented it in my junior year midterm exam. So I'd like you all to meet Tarzan. Let me set him down. So this is Tarzan driving around right now. He is a Finch robot. And he has, despite being such a small robot, he has quite a voice. So let's uh, listen up. How's it going, Tarzan? Hi, people. Hey, Max. Do I look all right? My hair just was not cooperating with me today, and I was rushed for time. You look great, Tarzan. Well, I am glad to see that one of us does then. Um, excuse me? I am not one to judge, but if you are giving a TED talk, it would have been nice to wear something with a little more wow factor. Well, not everybody can be a robot that shoots lasers out of its face like you, Tarzan. Or be as devilishly handsome. Okay, okay. Other than giving you a huge ego, what else did I program you to do? 
The program me to play laser tag. You also publish the program online in an effort to teach young computer scientists how to code. What else did it accomplish? It. Hmm. I guess Tarzan got a little shy. Anyways, do you want to know why Talkative Terry talks? Why Chatterbox Chris chats? It's for two reasons. School wasn't fun to them, and it wasn't tangible to them. In order to remedy these problems, we need to implement what us computer scientists and us video game makers have been doing for years. This process is called the gamification of education. What is the biggest illness going around in schools today? It's not uh, strep throat. It's not stomach flu. It's senioritis. And senioritis is this dreadful disease in which kids do not feel motivated to do their work in class, and they don't feel <coughs> obligated to take control of their own education. And senioritis is caused when students feel a lack of agency in their education. Well, what do I mean by agency? Agency is this term which means the sense of being in control of one's destiny. And students are one of the least agent people you will ever meet because from the time that they enter the education process to the time that they leave the education, they are told to do things a certain way on their first try or else they risk losing points. Homework has to be done a certain way or else it is wrong. Tests are designed to be a certain way or it is wrong. Even persuasive essays, which seems like would have a lot of creative avenues to explore, are quite similar when you get right down to it. All of them require the same three-body paragraph format with a topic sentence at the beginning, followed by a quote, followed by analysis, followed by another quote, followed by more analysis, followed by a concluding sentence. My game captured 100% of class participation because it gave my peers weighted choices to make against the aliens. I'm sure that when they started to play my game, they answered the locals' questions with the topic sentences below the concluding sentence with analysis before the quotes, and then the entire answer just flipped on its side somehow. But after a lot of vaporizations by the aliens, they finally discovered that the best way to answer the locals' questions was the same exact way that teachers had been teaching them for years. Here's the difference, though, ladies and gentlemen. My program allowed them to discover this on their own. It gave them a sense of agency. We need to make education, <clears throat> we need to give students more agency in their education. And I propose the best way we do this is through looking at our grading system. Today we have a very top-down based grading system in which every student starts at an A+, and we set this norm that every single assignment that they're going to get, every single test that they're going to take, is going to be a perfect score. If they get any less than a perfect score, then they're losing points. And it ingrains in these students' minds this dread, this fear of getting assignments, getting tests. Because every single time a teacher says, we're going to have homework today, the student automatically associates that with, I'm going to lose something. And it sucks to lose something. I propose we do what video games do, in which every student starts at zero points. And then we'll pick a predetermined amount of points needed to get to level one, which equates to an E, a certain amount of points that uh, to get to level two, which equates to a D, so on and so forth. You guys get the idea. And the goal of this is not to change the curriculum at all. In fact, you don't have to change the amount of points offered in the class, but what it does this time is count up, not down, meaning students are going to be excited to get tests because they're going to want to get to this high score, this new level. I also propose we invoke a perk system in which Every single time a student levels up, he will have a list of perks to choose from. These perks may start off insignificant, like gaining 100 bonus experience points, which would equate to maybe one or two points in our grading system today. Not anything significant, obviously, but it gives students immediate reassurance that their grades are valuable, that they are tangible, because students have a hard time realizing the value of what an A means, a B means. But with this system, they will right away. The second part of this process is we need to make 
education more applicable to students. Pioneer's computer science program does an excellent job with this. We take field trips to uh, computer science competitions all across the state and compete against other teams, such as our rival computer science school, the Kalamazoo Math and Science Center. I hate them so much. <laughs> we also have University of Michigan majors in computer science come in and talk to us every Wednesday about what it would be like to major in computer science at Michigan, which is extremely beneficial because a lot of students don't know what they're going to major in by the time they graduate senior year. But everyone in computer science class now has a very good idea about what it would be like to major in computer science and can either explore that or choose to not explore that. The third thing that we do is we take field trips to downtown tech companies such as Google and Barracuda Networks. I don't know if any of you have seen tech companies or heard about them, but Google has a swimming pool in their basement. And a slide. I don't know if any Pioneer administrators are in the building here today, but uh, slide is the next thing on the agenda, by the way. <laughs> Just telling you. OK. So what this does is it promotes agency. It shows students that what we're doing inside computer science class is being used every single day outside of computer science class. And I encourage teachers to go and find extracurricular activities that relate to the fields that they teach and bring it into their classroom so that students can explore this on a deeper level. Nothing motivates a student more than telling them, if you do this in class, you will eventually work at a building with a swimming pool in your basement. It comes down to this. Education, or computer science, excuse me, is being used everywhere. Every time you send a Snapchat, make a phone call, or create a new email, you're using a piece of technology that a computer scientist made. Every single time you change a modern house's thermostat, use your car's GPS, or watch television, you're using a piece of technology that a computer scientist helped create. Every modern skyscraper will be modeled by a computer before it is built by construction men. Every new vaccination and medicine will be tested by a computer before it is tested in a lab. And every penny we all own that is stored in the bank is stored there on a program made by a computer scientist. It's time to invest in what these new computer science technologies have and bring that into our education. Thank you, everyone.